Hello everyone, today our tutorial topic will be about geothermal energy with special concentration on a comparison between the conventional geothermal harvesting methods and modular wellhead power plants. Now, what is geothermal energy? As we know, Earth is made of several geological layers with various densities and temperatures. Geothermal energy is basically a thermal energy access from the deep earth. It is considered to be a renewable, clean, and sustainable source of energy existing in the form of either liquid, dominated as in water, or vapor, dominated as in steam. The following image is an example of the layers of the earth that are involved in geothermal energy. The production wells are dug until the preamble rock layer right before the water flow and then water or steam is usually pumped to be used in the plant, either for heat or electricity generation. Geothermal energy have existed for thousands of years where hot springs have been used for bathing in different parts of the earth, such as China, Italy, and others. The history of geothermal energy has been uncovered through archaeology, and it was believed that it has been used in industry in the late 18th century. However, in 1904, the first power plant was established in central Italy to generate power for the first time. Global installed capacity of geothermal energy unveiled at 12.8 gigawatt in 2014. That is increasing contributed from different nations. The graph demonstrates the top 10 countries in geothermal power production in 2014. The United States have the highest geothermal installed capacity, while Kenya installed the highest added capacity reaching up to 358 megawatts in 2014. There are three geothermal plant extraction methods, and these are dry steam power plants, binary cycle power plants, and flash steam power plants, being the most utilized power plants. With two types of plants, the conventional power plants with joint wells and wellhead power plant where only one extraction well is joined, which is what we are comparing. A conventional power generating system works as the following. First, Hot water or steam is pumped from deep underground called reservoir through a well under high pressure. The condensing flash system shown in this image, the steam from the turbine is discharged to a condensing chamber that is maintained at very low absolute pressure, typically about 0.12 bar. The greater pressure dropped across the condensing turbine converts the steam into water. Lastly, we inject the water back into the reservoir through the injection well. Geothermal power plants have several advantages to their usage that can be summarized as To start with, it has a high capacity factor that is approximately above 90%. Capacity factor is a ratio of a power plant actual output to its potential output to operate at full capacity. Having 90% capacity factor means it will be higher than the other renewable energy technologies. For example, when compared to wind which has a maximum of 30% capacity factor. Secondly, Comparing to other intermittent renewable sources, geothermal energy provides stable and reliable energy. And then, the flexibility of plants. 
plant loads can be increased or decreased depending on the demand. This can help an energy system where other intermittent sources of energy are used, for instance, solar or wind, by remaining the supply relatively stable. It has a low cost of energy produced, between 4 to 10 US cents per kilowatt hours, because there is low operational cost and high capacity factor. Low land use per unit of energy produced, it produces low CO2 emissions, and it has a relatively small environmental impact compared to other energy sources. Lastly, development of a domestic energy source that reduces the risks related to the price of imported fuel. On the other hand, Geothermal energy has several disadvantages as well that can be expressed as follows. First, the unavailability of geothermal resources. It is estimated that geothermal resources are only available for utilization on one quarter to one third of the planet's surface. Difficulty in raising the capital needed for investment. This is basically because of three main reasons. The first is initial capital cost is needed is quite large. Second, there is a high risk in the early stage of development of the geothermal project, mainly in the drilling stage. The unpredictability of source even after research and studies the developer might drill and not find the source regardless of the research. The last one, the long payback period in which the project produces energy and generated revenue, as the developer has to drill and test the wells before designing the power plant, as well as the time it takes to commence energy production. The existing geothermal power plants are represented in the following slide. The conventional method connects individual wells with pipes to a centralized power plant and then to the grid to supply the generated electricity. Whereas the wellhead modular system has each well connected to the power plant and each power plant will be connected separately to the grid. Wellhead power plant consists of smaller plants that can be built and brought online as soon as each well is drilled and tested, instead of having to wait for all the wells in the steam field to be drilled and tested, which typically takes three years for a traditional power plant. This allows this production of energy at early stage in the project and empowers the project when policymakers are more likely to support geothermal energy by the quick production of energy. Also, the wellhead generation units are used usually for power generation and utilization of non-commercial deemed well for large projects, but still have small-scale application potential. Conventional geothermal technologies has existed for as long as geothermal energy has been discovered. Nonetheless, wellhead is a relatively new technology, and it has only been applied in Kenya so far. The following is a case study of geothermal energy in Kenya. Kenya is located in East Africa with a national geothermal installed capacity reaching 593 megawatts, where 358 megawatts has been added in 2014, forming 26% of the energy mix installed generating capacity, and placing Kenya 8th globally in the geothermal installed capacity. The Great Rift Valley cuts across Kenya, 
where most of geothermal resource in the country is found. Because the Rift Valley is in an area where the earth crust is stretching, the crust is thinner. Therefore, most of geothermal resource is concentrated along it. Research shows that Rift Valley alone has a potential of over 10,000 megawatts. The Kenyan government is putting a lot of focus in the resource to cater for the increasing electricity demand. However, being a developing country, the main challenge being faced by the government is the high initial investment costs. Comparing both systems, there are benefits and drawbacks for each system identified. Starting with the conventional power plant, the two main advantages are It is a proven technology because it has been used for decades. And it requires a single transmission line because electricity generation is centralized. However, the main disadvantages are Long time to get power output mainly because it takes long to construct and start operating. And it has high capital cost, because for example, plants need a steam gathering system to deliver the geothermal fluid to the power plant. Moving on to wellhead plants, their main advantages are, the power plant is modular and easily movable. Hence, can be easily repaired or moved to another site. Also, each module is independent, making the others operate even when one of the unit fails. It takes only six months to construct and start operation. Hence, it attractive to investors. On the contrary, they have a number of disadvantages. The main ones being need slightly higher cost per kilowatt because of separated technology such as transformers and steam separators. And it needs higher steam consumption per megawatt because there are steam energy losses in every module, even if it is not significant. The following slide is a comparison between the conventional energy power plants and the wellhead modular power plants. In addition to an overview of the project's general life cycle, everything in terms of research and development is similar until the evaluation stage, in which we can see for wellhead plants consists of several evaluation stages for each extraction well, and then comes the construction stage by which at the end of the construction for the plant. It can operate along with the construction other plants. Unlike the conventional method where evaluation takes place for all wells and then the construction occurs for the whole plants after which the project can begin to operate and extract energy. This reveals the lifespan of project within 10 years by which wellhead plants would have started making revenue in the middle of year 3, while conventional method starts making revenue at the beginning of year 8. This illustrates a shorter payback period for wellhead modular system in comparison to conventional methods. Finally, Geothermal energy is one of the sources with promising potential, by which we should put more effort into exploiting. It's an efficient, renewable, and sustainable source, which is relatively understood and cost-effective with a global expanding capacity as previously revealed. Thank you all for watching this tutorial. We hope it was insightful, useful, and please do contact any of the following for more information and questions.
please refer to the following references for additional information.